Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about coupled transcription and translation. Now I think that these are processes you've probably heard of before, but really quick, let's just review what they mean. When the cell is synthesizing mRNA, sometimes called an mRNA message, from a DNA template, this is what happens in the process of transcription. When the mRNA synthesized in transcription is then used as a template for the synthesis of protein by the cell, this is what's happening in the process of translation. Now, these two processes together are the major processes of gene expression in the cell. When I say gene expression, I mean the information that is contained in the, in the gene, in the genetic information, in the DNA of the cell, it is being expressed by way of an mRNA message that is then uh, translated during translation to make protein. And the proteins are the functional units within the cell that are carrying out the activities that are encoded for by those genes. And so these processes, transcription and translation, are uh, the two major processes in gene expression, and we learn about them with the central dogma. And so if you're interested in learning more about gene expression and what is entailed within the central dogma, please see my video on that topic. But now let's get back to this idea of couples, transcription, and translation, and what that means. Now in eukaryotes, remember that eukaryotes are all organisms that are not prokaryotes. So what do we mean by that? There are differences between eukaryotes and prokaryotes that we're not going to go into today, but in eukaryotes we're mainly thinking about animals, including humans, also plants, fungi, uh, algae, things like that. And so in eukaryotes, these two processes, transcription and translation, are separated both in time and in space. And what I mean by that is that eukaryotes have a nuclear membrane that houses the DNA. So in all eukaryotic cells, transcription is happening where the DNA is inside the nucleus, Translation is happening in the cytoplasm outside the nucleus. And so transcription has to complete first, and then the completed mRNA message uh, actually gets uh, uh, post-transcriptionally modified to make what's called a mature mRNA transcript. If you're interested in learning more about that post-transcriptional modification process that occurs between transcription and translation in eukaryotes, please see my video on that topic. And then once that mature transcript has been completely modified, it then leaves the nucleus, goes out into the cytoplasm, and gets translated. So in eukaryotes, transcription and translation, they happen in different places, and transcription happens first, and then translation happens second. In prokaryotes, on the other hand, which includes all bacteria as well as a type of cell called archaea, so in prokaryotes, there is no nuclear membrane. And so the DNA is just free floating in the cytoplasm. It is typically constrained to a particular region of the cell, but there's still no nuclear membrane that's completely compartmentalizing it. And so there's no nuclear membrane to separate these two processes, which means that transcription and translation can actually be occurring simultaneously. And this is what we say is coupling. So the fact that there's no nuclear membrane to separate these two processes, that is what allows them to be coupled. Coupled just meaning that they are occurring at the same time. So now let's look at what this looks like. Here in red, we have the DNA. When it's being transcribed, the two strands of the DNA get pulled apart and uh, an enzyme called RNA polymerase that's here in blue. I'm going to write RNA Paul or RNA polymerase. It is moving down the DNA, creating mRNA. Here, this brown line coming off the RNA polymerase is the mRNA. And again, this red one up here is DNA. 
So this mRNA is being made by the RNA polymerase. Remember that that is transcription. So the gene in the DNA is being transcribed. But at the same time, as the RNA polymerase is still transcribing this gene, already you have ribosomes. And the ribosomes are here in orange. Each one of these is an individual ribosome. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six drawn, and there can be many more. So each individual ribosome is already synthesizing protein, and that is what is here shown in pink. And so this is translation, the synthesis of protein. And so you have all of these pink polypeptide chains. Remember, these are what make up proteins. And so as, the, as a ribosome docks onto the mRNA, it starts moving this way. And as they get closer and closer to where the RNA polymerase is working, they're making longer and longer polypeptides. Now, all of these polypeptides are eventually going to be the same protein because the, the ribosomes are translating the same gene along this mRNA. So here the cell is making many copies of the same protein. And you just see the size difference here. This one is bigger simply because this ribosome is further down the mRNA and so further along that process of translation than say this one is, for example. Now, when you have all of these ribosomes working sort of side by side, although they are working independently, we actually call this right here a polyribosome or sometimes a polysome. And that just refers to the fact that there are multiple ribosomes working at once. And just to reiterate, they are translating this protein uh, tra translating the mRNA into protein before this RNA polymerase is even done transcribing. Of course, it does have to finish transcribing before they can complete their polypeptide synthesis, but still the processes are happening basically at the same time. And I want to point out one more thing. Prokaryotic transcripts tend to have many genes per transcript. Not so with eukaryotes, which usually only have one gene on each mRNA transcript. So prokaryotic transcripts, meaning the mRNA, can have many distinct genes on them. This is known as what is called a polycystronic. So polycystronic just meaning that within one long uh, mRNA transcript, there can be ribosomes that are uh, translating along different parts of it, resulting in different proteins. So that is it today for couples transcription and translation. Thank you for watching.